Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Demi here with Thoughtful Dots and it's been a minute since we've done a longer painting tutorial. So today I'm going to be painting on this cute little three inch rock. This is a plaster rock. I've already painted it black. And for my black, I like to use Folk Art Multi-Surface Satin in Pure Black, but you can paint with whichever black base you prefer. And if you want to buy these little rocks already made, I get mine from The Rock Shop Co. on Etsy. That is my dad's rock shop. And I will also leave a link in the description for that. Um, some people like to make their own rocks. Some people like to buy them already made. I personally don't like to make my own, so I just get them already made. Um, and they have this nice little center marked here. It's actually a little bit raised. I like to take my nail and like try to pop off. I might actually need to use a tool. The little dot is helpful, but at the same time, we're going to dot our center dot over it. So I don't like for it to be raised like that. So I just make it even. And then we're going to dot right over that. So I am holding a mandala painting retreat this fall and I'm super excited about it. Tickets are already sold out, but I definitely plan on doing more of them. But I'm doing little gift bags, like goodie bags that I'll be giving to each participant. And in the goodie bags, I wanted to make a little handmade gift for each person that will be attending. And I've already made a few. They're all going to be this rainbow palette, but different patterns. So we won't be doing this pattern today. We're going to be doing something a little bit different, but same colors. So I'm going to be making, over time, um, about 20 of these little rocks to give to people in their goodie bags. So that is cute and exciting. I think people will like that. But yeah, if you guys are interested in joining my future retreats, make sure to go to my website, thoughtfuldots.com. And there's a um, retreat tab on there and you can click on it. It says sold out because it's the fall one sold out. But if you want to be notified about future ones, you can add your email to the mailing list um, to be notified about future retreats. Okay, so this is gonna be just a real time painting tutorial. So if you're looking for something quick and edited, you might just wanna skip this one because we're just gonna go at our real and normal pace. So I've already painted this. I have this little palette. I will be using tools from Happy Dotting Company, so I'll be sure to let you guys know the millimeter size. <clears throat> and then I'll also be using dotting rods or um, nail stylus tools. And I will leave a link in the description of the video as well for a size chart for my specific tools. All of my tools are filthy. I do clean them, not often, but it is time for a new set. So yesterday I just ordered a brand new set of Happy Dotting Company dotting rods and stylus tools. So I cannot wait because the numbers, I mean, I've just used, I use these every day. So I'm excited for my new set. So we are just going to get started. So I'm going to start with this pink dragon fruit. And I can show you guys the colors real quick. Dragon fruit, jack-o'-lantern orange, primary yellow, sour apple, and peacock teal. Oh, I forgot my purple. And lavender for purple. So we're going to start with the dragon fruit, the pink. And I just have to figure out what size tool I want. Something a little larger, but not too large. So I'm going to choose this size 11. And I just like to do a couple tapping motions. 
make sure we get a nice mound. I've had this Lazy Susan forever too, and I needed to order a new one because I've tried getting this paint off and the other day I got black on it and it just doesn't look pretty anymore. I'm going to pour just a little bit of this white pearl. If you don't have white pearl, you can use just a regular white, but I love this metallic white pearl. I use it on a lot of my pieces. And I'm using the small end of the pink nail stylus. And I'm just going to do a tiny ring of dots. going around this center dot. I just want to get these as close to one another without touching and as close to the pink center dot without touching and then just do your best to make them all a consistent size and if you notice that your dots are getting progressively bigger you may just need to wipe your tool off because if that paint builds up on the end then your dots will progressively get bigger. And then at the end here, I just kind of eyeball, I can fit about two more right there. If your spacing doesn't line up perfectly, sometimes you need to space the last two or three a little bit further apart to get it to fit nicely, or sometimes you need to make them just a little bit bigger to fit. But I do not count these. I just kind of adjust the size and spacing for the last few to get them to fill the gap. But that worked out pretty well. So I'm just wiping my tool off and then I'm going to use the jack-o'-lantern orange next. Just pouring a little bit, I don't need a lot. And I'm going to use the same small end of the pink stylus. And I'm going to dot in between each dot from the previous row. And if you notice that you have like big gaps in between your orange dots, you might need to go up in size on your tool. So maybe try the large end of the pink tool and that might help fill in the gaps. I'm kind of doing this tapping motion. So you'll notice a dot and then tap. So every time you <clears throat> tap, you're unloading a little bit more paint, which will make the dots a little bit bigger. I like doing this because I feel like it gives me more control over the size. So if you're finding that yours are really small and not filling in the gaps nicely, then you can either try the tapping motion to make them bigger or go up in size to the large end of the pink stylus.
So I've been doing the tapping motion. So now I'm gonna just try using the large end of the pink tool. So I feel like that might make them a little too big. So it's really about control over your tool because I can use the larger end and just use less pressure and it will make a smaller dot. But you just wanna find a tool that makes a dot that fits nicely in between each dot from the previous row and doesn't leave you with too many gaps in between your orange dots. That worked out nicely. Okay. So we're not using guide marks today, mainly because I forgot, but it's totally possible to do this without. So I really just need clean tools. I can't wait. So I'm just trying to figure out what size I want to do. So I'm going in the rainbow gradient. So we did pink and then we did orange. So next is yellow. So I'm going to pour some of this primary yellow. And I'm going to use the size four and a half millimeter rod. And we're just going to make a dot right up against that orange row. And then we're gonna leave a little bit of a gap in between because we're gonna do a little swoosh that goes right through the center of each one. So make sure to leave a little gap and we're just going to do this all the way around. That yellow one has a little chunky. Just pulled that out, it had a little piece of dry paint. So that one's not perfectly circular, but it's okay. So just do your best to make these all the same size and then just leaving a little gap in between each one for a swoosh. And then as you get towards the end, just start looking at the spacing. One, two, Three. So it looks like I can fit about three. I might have to space them just a little bit further apart. Actually, I think that would have been fine without spacing it that far apart. I'm going to wipe up just the last two. Or no, three. I spaced that one a little bit further apart because I thought I had too much space, but it actually will be perfect if I just do it normal. So one. When I first started painting, I didn't use guide marks for the longest time. So it's kind of fun to like go back and just play with it now with no guide marks. Okay, for the little swooshes, I'm going to use Nuvo Drops, but if you don't have Nuvo Drops, no problem. Just use your pearl paint or just white paint. And you're gonna start by making a dot. And then I'm taking the small end of the pink tool and dragging it down into a little swoosh to fill in that gap.
If you don't have the Nouveau, you could try using the large end of the pink tool to make your dot and then flip it over and use the small end to drag down. And then I'm just trying to figure out the pattern. I'm just kind of going with the flow on this one. So I want to see if I do a dot here, can I do every other swoosh? And no, because if I skip every other, then I'll have two right next to each other. So instead we're going to do every swoosh, we're going to do a dot. So red, orange, yellow, now we're gonna go to green, sour apple, and I'm going to use the four and a half again. So we're now going to do a dot on every white swoosh that we made. And just keep an eye on your spacing. Make sure that they're all the same amount of space in between. So I'm just looking to see about how much space I have and then thinking about how I want to fill in the space. Red, orange, yellow, green. So we'll do blue and purple. So I'm going to pour some blue. And I'm using the large end of the pink tool. And I'm just going to make a dot right at the tip. Of each green. Just do your best to make it right in the center. Then I'm going to flip it over and use the small end of the pink stylus. And I'm going to make a swoosh, pretty much just outlining the green dot. And you wanna get it close to the green dot, but try not to touch it. So I'll just be painting a bunch of these little rainbow rocks for the goodie bags. So I'll try to record the process of doing a few more with the same 
palette, just different patterns. I would like for them all to have different patterns to be unique. Just a few more. So we still have gaps in between, so we want to do another pattern. So what I'm going to do is use the large end of the pink and I'm going to pour some lavender. And I'm going to do three dots at the tip of the previous pattern. So now we have all of our three dots. And now I'm going to flip it over and use the small end of the pink stylus again and the purple. And we're just going to do another swoosh that's going right up against that blue. And we're just getting close to the blue, but trying not to touch it. And this will help fill in the gaps in between there. I would like to get more little beginner videos like this up on YouTube. I've been so busy lately with Patreon. If you guys don't know Patreon, I teach weekly live classes on Patreon. It's a little more advanced, so I definitely recommend like starting out with these free YouTube videos for beginners. And then once you get the hang of it, then Patreon is a great resource for kind of taking your paintings to the next level. But yeah, I teach weekly live classes on there, which is just so fun. There's a live chat, so everyone like paints along and then talks, chats in the comments. It's just a blast. But that's been keeping me busy. But I would like to just get some more beginner tutorials up because I know there's a lot of people who need help as beginners. So I try to just have resources for everybody at all skill levels. Okay. So now we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So next, we're gonna go back to the pink color and I'm using the four and a half dotting rod. And I'm just going to make a dot right in between 
each pattern that we just made. Before we go further, I have like a little bit of a gap right here. I just want to fill that in. So I'm going to make a dot with the large end of my pink tool. <clears throat> and I'm using the pink color. And then I'm just going to drag a swoosh up. If you don't have gaps right there, you can just do a dot and leave it as a dot. Some of mine have pretty big gaps, so I just want to make sure they're not super noticeable. So next I'm going to do the orange and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm using the large end of the pink stylus to make a dot at the tip. And I'm going to flip it over and use the small end of the pink stylus. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to dot and drag down. Okay, and I just want to do some little brush strokes. So this might be a little tricky. If you don't wanna do brush strokes, then you can just use a stylus tool to make a similar shape. But if I'm gonna be gifting these to my students at a retreat, I need to include some brush strokes because that's kind of my signature thing. So I'm just getting a little bit of yellow paint. I'm using these XDT brushes. This one is two over zero. 
And it's tricky on the edge here because we need somewhere to rest our hands. So I'm going to place my wrist down. I'm actually gonna move this Lazy Susan. You just need somewhere to firmly place your wrist. But you can totally do this with a stylus tool if you prefer. Cute little petals. Cute. Just rinsing off that brush. And then I'm going to use some more Nuvo drops. Again, if you don't have Nuvo, you can just use regular paint. But I am going to make these three little swooshes. Just going right in between each petal to fill in that gap there. I'm choosing the pearl paint, but you could also do um, blue and purple or green, blue, whatever the rainbow order is. So the previous pattern was pink, orange, yellow. So you could do green, blue or blue and purple. Okay, now we have all our swooshes. I wanna make this one really funky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and then we're gonna do probably a few layers of top dots. So actually, um, the center rings look like they could be dry enough. For top dots, you just wanna make sure the previous row is dry, but I think we can do it now. 
So for the center dot, I'm going to kind of go in the rainbow order. So the center dot is pink. So for the top dot, I'm going to do orange. And I actually need a little bit more orange. So top dotting orange. And then we have yellow. So I'm just going to do... We have yellow, so I'm going to top dot with the next color, which is green. And you want to top dot with a tool that is smaller. So I'm actually going to use the large end of the green stylus. Just make sure your dot is slightly smaller than the yellow so that it's not covering it. And then this next color right here, we have green. So I'm gonna to go to the next color, which is blue. I'm gonna pour just a little bit more. And then once all of these dry, I'm going to do one more layer just to really make this funky and give it a bunch of layers. Make it really interesting to look at. And then the next one's pink, so we're going to do orange. And I feel like these top dots just really bring it to life. Yeah, that looks really cool. Okay, so we're gonna let all those dry and then we're gonna do just one last layer of top dots and then we'll be finished. Oh, I wanna do the center first. So I just need to find a tool that is slightly smaller. So I'm using the size five dotting rod and the yellow, the yellow got a little thick. So I just poured a little fresh paint And just dotting right in the center. And then I'm grabbing the large end of the pink stylus and we did green, yellow, green. So now the top dot will be blue. And I'm just adding a tiny little dot in the center of each green. So we're just layering this. Then this one, we're going to top dot with purple. I'm using that same large end of the pink stylus. I'm just dotting in the center with purple.
And then for this last one, we did orange. So now we're going to do yellow. Same large end of the pink stylus. And just top dotting. And we are finished and now that looks really nice and layered it's funky and textured super fun so I'm going to wait for this to fully dry and then I'm going to varnish it lately I've been really liking this deco art Duraclear satin varnish they also make matte and gloss so you just pick the um, finish that you like I've been liking the satin the satin is still pretty glossy, so I'll just brush that on with a brush. I like to use these brushes I just got at Hobby Lobby. And just brush it on. I usually do one coat, let it dry, and then I'll do the second. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. I will do my best to upload more beginner tutorials here on YouTube, but for more advanced, definitely make sure to check out my Patreon. There's a library of, I don't even know, 50, 60 video classes on there right now that you can catch up on. And you'll also be able to join the weekly live classes that happen every Saturday. All right, I will be sure to link everything in the description of the video, so make sure to check that out. And we'll see you next time.